All right, hello everyone and thank you for joining. Um, this is a Mariah webinar today on early pay discounts and rebates. So we're gonna go over how to reduce costs and generate revenue with automation and payment optimization. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to put them in the chat um, and we'd be happy to answer them at the end of the webinar. Everyone will also receive a recording after today's live webinar, so you can expect that as well. So to start off, I'd like to introduce our industry expert, Steve Pizzak, CPA, and he's had over 35 years experience in technology and process automation. Um, so he really knows his stuff and he's excited to discuss with you all. So again, if you have any questions for him, please just put it in the chat. And here we go. I'm gonna pass it over to Steve. Thank you, Chelsea, and, and thank you all for joining us today for this webinar. <clears throat> our goal today really is to, to kind of address um, not what I would consider a new phenomenon, but certainly one that's garnered a lot of attention. Uh, and that is the automation of payments and the opportunity to leverage that in not only reducing costs of the payment process, but making that process more efficient and ultimately through some of the payment methods to potentially generate revenue. So, you know, the focus today really is going to be about addressing some of those and you know, be happy to answer any questions, as Kelsey had mentioned, uh, at the end of the discussion uh, around how to properly you know, evaluate that, you know, how we can potentially help and uh, you know, how to engage to make that happen. So business process automation and payments really is, you know, it's a hot topic in the industry today. Um, you know, if you the biggest issue that I think we run into is, you know, the manual processing, uh, specifically invoices for the accounts payable, really prohibits the ability to timely be able to capture not only cost savings from a process perspective and, and those internal soft costs, um, but the ability to, you know, reduce the cost of, you know, payments um, because, you know, you may be running late in getting that paperwork processed or to, you know, to not avail yourself of potential discounts that could be available uh, from the vendors in your network um, based upon their cash flow needs. Uh, it's based upon, you know, 2019 report um, that surveyed, you know, a broad section of the marketplace. 78% of organizations admit that they're not able to get their invoices processed on time and they end up paying their supplier late. <clears throat> and of those, 58% of those organizations paying late actually needed to pay late charges. Uh, so not only aren't you taking advantage of the efficiencies and cost savings and potential uh, discounts available, but you're incurring additional costs because your processes aren't allowing you to take advantage of those and are penalizing you for that. Um, you know, and clearly, 0% of organizations, you know, want to lose that opportunity or incur additional costs because of uh, a process breakdown. So what do we, what do we mean when we talk about, you know, cost reduction, you know, across the board and, and rebate revenue? I mean, you know, the antithesis of, of, of cost reduction is, is really taking it the other way. And what does it, what does it mean? Well, the first part is, is relatively easy and it's been around for quite some time and that's early pay discounts. Um, these vary on a vendor by vendor basis and sometimes with a vendor on a you know, month by month basis. Um, if a vendor has cash flow needs, uh, they may be willing to negotiate um, a slight discount for quicker payment. Um, so that they can continue to fund their business operations. Um, maybe some months they need it more than others, um, you know, and that could change or it could be a standard negotiated opportunity with each uh, buyer that is engaging with the vendor. So, you know, but in a nutshell, for the, you know, for the convenience uh, to the vendor of paying their bill early, um, say less than the standard 30 days, they'll agree to a one or 2% discount. And um, so not only does, does the vendor get their cash quicker, but the buyer has a lower cost 
uh, of goods or, or operations, et cetera, because they've negotiated that deal. And that's a standard you know, thing that's been in the industry for a while. But again, in order to, for the ability to pay an invoice early, it needs to be processed and ready to pay. And that certainly is one of the challenges we see out there. The second you know, component of, of the discussion today is really around rebate revenue. And this is a relatively new methodology and, and opportunity in the marketplace. And it really has to do with the utilization of virtual credit cards and payment cards, uh, V cards for short. And you know, these, you know, with the advent of lots of real-time technology and interconnectivity of systems um, and vendors and buyers, et cetera, um, and, the, and the access of funds through that network, there is the ability now to issue payment in the terms of an electronic payment card. Um, the reasons for this is, you know, it's very safe and a fast way to pay your vendors. Um, you don't have the cost of check stock or ACH charges or wire charges, and postage, et cetera. And, uh, you know, it certainly is a convenient way for buyers to, to pay their invoices. Vendors love it because they get their funds more quickly. Um, so again, similar to the early pay discounts, in order, you know, when they accept a V card to get those funds more quickly, um, they also agree to a charge, um, you know, a, a service charge, so to speak, to use that card to get access to those funds. <clears throat> that fee is, is charged by the network that typically issues the card you know, think MasterCard and Visa as the, as the industry standards for, for card payments. And uh, the, that network will typically share some of that fee revenue that, um, you know, back to the buyer for you know, utilizing that service. And ultimately, you know, that will either work to reduce costs or depending upon volumes, really look to generate rebate revenue back to the company um, to offset you know, processing payment costs across the board. Um, so it really can be a, a real revenue generator for an organization. The bottom line of both you know, of these opportunities to better manage costs uh, around the, the invoice AP process is automation. Neither of these are really available uh, or you know, are able to be utilized and taken advantage of unless you're able to automate and better manage the AP process to get to that point of payment. So, you know, it, you really need to look at the inherent, uh, you know, AP organization within your company as to whether you're well positioned, whether you have the right technologies and, and workflow processes to move you know, the, the manual paper process to a more digital automated process so that you're able to make those management decisions on when to pay, how to pay, um, and, and what vendors to work with to do that. So if you look at, you know, what those requirements are from an automation perspective, you know, industry analysis will show that you know, you can reduce your processing costs in automation. Um, the, the metrics really are if you, you know, compare a fully paper-based manual process um, and move it to a completely automated process, you move your costs from about $17 per invoice to about two. That's an 88% cost savings. Again, these are internal costs. Um, and what that allows you to do is redeploy your AP resources to more exception resolution, business analytics, uh, client, you know, and vendor management functions, you know, more value add than administrative. Once you now, you know, have automated this process, in addition to the cost savings, again, based upon industry standards, you're also moving the time frame that you're able to, to make these decisions. And a typical manually based process takes about three weeks 
to move paper from you know receipt to indexing and approvals, you know, et cetera, you know, to it's in a ready to pay status. By automating that process, you can move it, you know, have that available in a ready to pay status in about three hours. Again, depending upon the organization, but that additional time now to manage the payment process with your vendors and you know, whether that be for discount terms by paying early or through you know, a V-card payment option, um, you now have the leverage to do that because you, you know, you're, you're managing um, those, those particular items um, from the beginning you know, where, where you have the time frame to do that. Uh, and that really is where the leverage comes from automating that process. So let's you know, look into what actually that entails to get to um, the ability to do that before we move into some of the metrics of potential savings. <coughs> Excuse me. So what is business process automation? You know, it really is utilizing technology to organize your people and your systems through workflows. You know, anywhere from basic automation um, to you know, where you're ingesting data uh, in an automated fashion, to process automation where you're putting rules around workflow you know, within a systematic way uh, to move things more effectively and efficiently through that process. You know, there's integration automation because you know, obviously there's many systems that affect um, you know, the overall transaction uh, from ingestion to posting and payment and you know, the GL system. And then you also have the learning component where you use an AI and machine learning, you know, to help continually, um, you know, add automation and learn from that process. And you really need to look at all of these components. Again, any one of them can help, but all of them in their entirety really gets you to a point where you can you know, best manage that process, you know, to, to decide what to pay and how to pay. What does that bring to the business? <clears throat> well, you know, as we've been talking about, it really enables you to, you know, to become more efficient, to save costs. But in addition to that, it, you know, it streamlines your processing and, and you know, sets standards for how things are going to process and, you know, enables control. Um, there's an accountability because systems will tip, you know, typically stand who's touching what, when, and what they're doing to it. Uh, you know, you're, you're using automation um, to, to move items through a process and, you know, you're minimizing internal costs there. Obviously reducing paperwork also reduces manual errors and you know any kind of uh, uh, duplicate entry issues that you may have or you know um, inaccuracies that may come from from having to enter into multiple systems etc. And all that improvement really just makes the process go more efficiently <clears throat> enables you to do more with less process, you know, enable the company to grow, uh, be able to process more invoices and, and better utilize your resources around. So all of those values to the business process automation really set you up to be able to take advantage of one of the hard dollar costs with uh, discounts and new cards. And uh, so again, we've, we've talked about a number of these things today in terms of the immediate impact uh, or ROI um, and you know, the, the automation of those processes really enables you to you know, reduce those costs uh, and you know, move to the more of the, the management decision process around uh, you know, payment automation, optimization, et cetera. Um, again, there's a lot of moving parts here. So if you have any questions, I would encourage you to um, send them over in the chat room, you know, to Kelsey, and we can address them at the end of the session. Um, you know, obviously, we're always available to, uh, to have one-on-one -on -one discussions around some of the, uh, the opportunities to automate these within your organization. So, as I mentioned, you know, the automation of the process really enables you to get to the main part of our discussion today, and that is, you know, Early paid discounts and, and V card and revenue, you know, rebate revenues, etc. So, 
now that we have a system that has captured data, automated a process, moved through approvals, and is in a ready to pay mode, you know, you now can negotiate either, you know, real time or, or pre-negotiate with your vendors, uh, the ability to, or, you know, get a discount for paying early. You know, this here's a particular example on the screen of, you know, how we're, you know, have the option of determining whether there's uh, a net pay or a discount pay that gives you the ability to, um, to negotiate that with your vendors. And some may actually have them as part of their standard terms, in which case, you know, most of your automation systems will be able to default by vendor to those terms so you know exactly what you're able to achieve if you have the invoice approved and ready to pay uh, by that time period. In addition to the discounts with you know, ready to pay, you also have the ability now to optimize your pay or you know, choose a better payment methodology. Clearly one of the most time consuming and costly ways to pay a vendor is by check, a manual check. Um, we certainly are aware that many vendors only accept checks and they're reluctant to share some of their banking information or other payment information. Um, but our experience and industry information also says that that is changing rapidly. Um, very often we see invoices coming in through, you know, a, a mailbox, a dedicated mailbox uh, that will already include ACH payment information directly on the invoice. So you know, clearly the vendors out there are, are, are looking to help move to more electronic methods of payment and are giving us the ability to allow that to happen uh, by capturing that data through the indexing process you know, for those invoices. So in addition to moving from manual check to electronic payments, um, this also sets up the ability now to move to you know, a V card payment or you know, a vendor purchase card. And you know, really what this is, this is a network service provided by many payment providers where a vendor will sign on for the ability to receive those payments via V card. Um, they typically have a number of control procedures you know, to, to be able to communicate and receive that payment information. It's a one-time card number, so it's very safe and secure, and you know, the risk of loss or fraud is minimized. Um, but it also makes that vendor available now to sign up with any other buyer that uses that vendor. So once they kind of come to an agreement through the vCard service provider, you know, anybody that's using that vCard service provider can now try to take advantage of V card payments with that vendor. So that's this really kind of the second big hurdle that the industry had. And it was, you know, gathering this data, you know, and not having to do it each and every time for each and every buyer uh, that was utilizing that vendor. So this database of information for these vendors um, is now centralized and available for all you know, to be able to use that and, and leverage that information for V cards. For example, you know, one of the, the, uh, the partners that we work with has over 500,000 vendors already signed up. Um, so any new client that would come on board would have the ability to leverage those 500,000 vendors uh, to have an immediate impact on not only moving to electronic payment you know, but the opportunity to generate rebate revenue through a V-card program. And again, all of this is only available if you've automated your AP process to get to this point. So let's take a look at what optimization means. So this is an example, you know, of, of, of some data that we ran through both pre and post optimization. And if you look on the left-hand side, you know, again, our current payment mix, you know, V cards are 0%, so they're, they're not currently using any of that information. ACH is actually pretty high um, compared to, to many companies. So uh, 
you know, clearly a, a forerunner with uh, moving to electronic payments, but still running pretty high, you know, at 10% manual checks. And then wires, you know, although electronic, can be very costly. You're, you're paying on both the sending and receive side of that, and if they're international, um, the costs are even higher. You know, and a breakdown, you know, by dollars, the number of payments are noted below. So by going through and, um, and going through the, the data analytics process of the vendor database, we're able to, you know, right away determine, you know, what payments may be eligible to move to, you know, to VCard or at a minimum more electronic means. And we're showing that graphically on the right side of the screen. So you see that, you know, VCards were able to go up to you know, over 15% of payment uh, methods. Um, and really, you know, everything related to that is an opportunity for rebate revenue. So the, the opportunity there, as you can see, is huge. Um, ACHs, you know, were, were pretty steady there. Um, manual checks went down um, and wires went down, which again, you know, a lot of costs with manual checks and wires. The good news is, is, you know, the, the partner that you work with here, this should be a continuous process. It's not a one and done. It's every time new vendors come on, you're going to try to sign them up for electronic and VCAR payments. And ones that don't sign up right away, you're going to continually work on them to move them to that. So this is a dynamic process and, you know, this optimized payment mix will change over time. Uh, to become more and more cost effective, uh, more and more electronic, and you know, obviously the goal to increase the rebate revenue opportunity accordingly over time. Here's a snapshot of just the short term costs that can be saved going through a payment optimization process. In this particular case, you know, we were able to knock you know, more than um, half of the current costs for processing uh, by moving to an optimized payment process with a payment provider. Now this is just the pure transactional costs associated with current payments today and it doesn't take into account the rebate revenue opportunity. So again, it's every company is gonna be a case-by-case -case basis on what vendors agree to you know, participate and get paid what that you know overall service fee is and what amount that gets rebated back to the customer. In this particular case, it was over a million dollars. So the, the opportunity is real, it's large, um, and it's certainly worthy of you know, looking at this whole process um, to really offset a lot of internal costs and generate potential revenue opportunities. So, you know, if that, Dollar figure doesn't entice, you know, at least, you know, some, uh, some searching as to whether or not this uh, makes sense. Um, you know, there's a way to get started. And, you know, obviously every organization is different. And, you know, you really need to, to look at what your processing pain points are. Maybe you already have a data capture, um, you know, tool that you want to use. Um, but the, the workflow process from there is not really dynamic and you need to automate that. Or maybe you have a good tool as part of your ERP system, but you need help on the front end with the digital data capture. Um, so you really need to identify where your pain points are, what you're trying to solve all the way through to posting and payment. And then there's, you know, you look at the options that are available out there. You know, there, there certainly are many end-to-end -end solutions, but there certainly are focused ones as well. So you wanna look at, you know, you know, bringing in solutions, and maybe it's multiple solutions um, to you know, to solve for each individual pain point that you may have, and then obviously you know bring in a business partner that has experience in handling um, the solutions required for your you know, your business pain. Um, so going through that, and you know, an analysis of, of what your current workflows are, working with a partner around best practices. And uh, you know how you know, to best utilize workflow and automation uh, and technology. Uh, clearly, implementation uh, is a is a critical factor, not just for the project, but for the overall integration into your business. 
Uh, a standalone solution can be very beneficial, but if, it, if, it's, if it's not seamlessly integrated to what you're doing today, uh, you're not going to gain the efficiencies that, that you really need. And then obviously ongoing maintenance, support, and development. Um, you know, this, the tools need to be dynamic. As we see today, the industry is changing as we speak, and the technologies and support services need to change along with that to you know, not only take advantage of what's available and bring back to clients, you know, but to offer clients what they need to stay more competitive in the marketplace. So today, you know, is this worthwhile for you to look at? Well, there's an easy way to find out from, from our perspective at Mariah. Uh, we have an online tool. Um, it's a quick and dirty uh, optimization savings calculator. You can pull it up off our website um, and it'll be included you know, in the materials that we distribute. Um, you know, enter in some, some high level indicative information about your payments and it'll estimate what your cost savings and potential re rebate revenue could be. Um, and obviously if, if you think that's worthy, uh, we can do a full detail analysis as well. Um, that'll bring you back to you know, similar results as what I sh showed in a slide um, with both pre and post graphical representations of that. Um, so with that, I'd like to recap, you know, where we are today in, in terms of, you know, what to look at from automation and uh, payment benefits. You know, I can't emphasize this enough, but you know, you need to get your processes automated so that invoices are ready to pay in hours and not weeks. Otherwise, you can't take advantage of these opportunities. Uh, you have more time to manage the payment process and optimize it through the, with the right partners to leverage and negotiate discounts and you know, quicker payment terms uh, via the V-cards, more efficient capture and you know, processing and approval. And that capture also goes along with the data management, the ability to search and, you know, and manage that data that you're going to utilize in other areas of the company. And once that, you know, you, you're at that point where you can optimize all that, you really can recognize drastic savings on not only the costs associated with actually getting that, pro, that invoice process to a payment, but the payments themselves by moving from manual to electronic methods, the discounts that you're able to negotiate from there, and the rebates that you're able to recognize you participate in, in, a, in a V card program. So, um, they're real, they're available today, and I think every company really should be looking at how they can take advantage of this to their benefit uh, from a corporate perspective. So with that, I will close out my comments, um, and I'll turn it back to Kelsey to see if there's any questions that have come in um, during the discussion. All right, thank you, Stu, for that informative look into payments and all the rebates and discounts. Um, if you have questions, please type them in the chat now and we're gonna go through and answer them. It looks like. So we do have some, um, one already. How does converting my current payment methods to optimize payment methods work and who handles this process? So Steve, I'm gonna turn it to you. Uh, sure. Ideally, you know, your payment partner um, that would be handling all of these payment methods, including the V-cards, has a program in place to be able to do this. So, as I had mentioned, our, our, our payment solution here, um, we have a network of over 500,000 vendors today um, that are in various stages of the electronic process, whether that's V-card, ACH, etc. cetera. Um, so you, you wanna make sure that you partner up with somebody who has a broad network already um, that includes information to be able to deliver those payments electronically. Uh, but as I mentioned, you also wanna make sure that's an ongoing process. So you don't just kind of do it one time when you come on board and nobody ever looks at it again and it kind of withers on the vine. It needs to be dynamic, you know, for you know, not only the organization um, to reap the benefit, um, you know, but also to take advantage of those rebates and those, uh, those revenue opportunities. Awesome, thank you for that. And we do have a few more questions. Um, 
Next one, can any type of current payments be converted to the vCard method? Uh, in general, yes. Um, there, there is a process to go through. Again, the critical piece is the vendor needs to have kind of signed on to participate in that vCard you know, uh, payment method. Once the vendor is signed on, then each and every new buyer that comes on board, you know, they'll contact the vendor and say, hey, ABC company wants to you know, pay you by vCard. Are you okay with that? Most of the time they'll agree. They can opt out. Uh, and there may be various reasons such as the payment volume's not high enough, we don't do enough business with them, et cetera. But that's a case where the continuing you know, process of nurturing that relationship. So as you know, the buyer's volume grows, they're going back to the V card vendor to say, hey, you know, can, can we join that? So, but in general, yes, but, but it is a process, it is dynamic, um, and it definitely needs to be managed. It just can't be a one and done. Awesome, okay, our next question. What are the most efficient payment methods and why? Um, well, clearly, electronic. You know, manual checks are the least efficient method, um, but they're never going to go away completely. We know that. Um, but the, the world is moving towards real-time payments, and ACH and VCARD, um, you know, are certainly the most efficient methods to do that. Uh, again, the benefit of VCARD is, is not only quicker payment, but safety. Um, you know, ACH, you know, is going to be scheduled like a check. Um, where there's going to be some, some lag time, you know, even if it's you know, going to be a discount. So, you know, if it's a 210 net 30 payment, they can still pay the ACH uh, in a shorter period of time, but it's still not going to be as quick as a VCAR payment. So um, there are, you know, benefits to each, um, depending upon, you know, the, the vendors that we're using, as well as the buyer's, you know, cash flow needs and, and payment optimization as well. Um, but clearly, you know, we're, that's where we're moving to is, is ACH, electronic means, and, and the V card. Great. And we have one last question as of now. Um, in the payment analysis example, which is one of the slides we showed, um, how are the optimized payment method percentages determined? That's a great question. Um, it's going to vary on a case-by-case -case basis. That's the most important thing to know. Um, you know, but basically we start with, you know, a, a full analysis of a client vendor's data, both the vendors, you know, where they are, how they're being paid today, the number of payments they're making and the, pay, and the spend. And then we'll run that through, you know, our database with our payment partners to say, hey, out of your 5,000 vendors, we have a thousand of them that are already signed up in our VCAR program. And based upon the criteria that, that that vendor uses, we think 800 of those will accept the VCAR payment. So, you know, it is a dynamic analysis that's, you know, determining what percentage is being utilized there. And it's gonna be different for each and every client just because of the makeup of their vendor list, the number of payments they're making, how they're making them, their spend that they have, et cetera. So, you know, I would encourage anyone that, you know, wants to have a real snapshot of their book uh, and what the potential optimization could be, you know, that they would reach out and we can run that analysis and have it be a result started around pretty quickly. All right. Well, thank you everyone. It looks like that's all of our questions today. So thank you to Steve for giving us this informative look into payments and automation. And thank you all for joining um, and we'll see you next time.